Hello and welcome everyone to the Indigenous Fair Teachings webinar. Jesse Cardinal Nitsigasun Kikino Otsinia. I'm Jesse Cardinal from the Kikino Metis Settlement located in Treaty 6 territory. Welcome to all of the elders tuning in, all of the youth, people at home, people at school, universities, friends and family. We have three amazing and wonderful people um, who are going to be sharing teaching, teachings on the bear, Masqua. We have Daffy Puya, Jeff West Desigut, Egua Kevin Lewis. I'd like to acknowledge the partners for this event. Keepers of the Water partnered with Indigenous Climate Action, also known as ICA. Indigenous Climate Action is doing amazing and very important work on climate justice and Indigenous rights. You can check out their website. They have a Facebook page, Instagram. I wouldn't be surprised if they're on TikTok as well. Um, so we have Lindsay Bassigal. She's the communication staff with ICA and she's helping run the show today. So thank you, Lindsay. Also, Ariel Duranger is the executive director for ICA. She's extremely talented and definitely a voice to be heard. So we wanna give her a shout out today as well. Our next partner is the Indigenous Knowledge Wisdom Center located in Amiskwichi, West Gaigan, also known as Edmonton in Treaty 6 territory. Uh, we've been working with James Lamouche, who's the Director of Research. And I'll tell you a little bit about the Indigenous Knowledge Wisdom Center. They um, provide educational support services to banned operated schools. They look at policy, language, culture, technology. They have a virtual library, um, which is online, and they have a collection of resources available for First Nations students on elders, teachings, culture, and language. Um, they also have a YouTube channel, so you can check out their YouTube channel. And um, they, are, they have a conference coming up. They're partnering with Alexander First Nation Education. And um, Jeff, can you mute your, can everybody mute there? Um, so they have a conference coming up February 3rd and 4th. And if you want more information on that education conference, you can check out First Nations Educators on Facebook. Um, they also have a social media, uh, they have a website, they have Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So that's Indigenous Knowledge Wisdom Center, who's one of our partners. And lastly, um, our other partner is Kaniasic Culture Camps, located in the Ministiquan Cree Nation in Treaty 6 Territory. Kevin Lewis, who's one of our presenters, he helps run the camp, and um, it's a year-round land-based learning camp. So right now they're in the midst of dog sledding. Um, if you haven't been dog sledding, check it out, give them a call. You can reach them on Facebook and they also have a website and you can book a session with them. I'd like to quickly share about Keepers of the Water. Um, on the last webinar, which was the Indigenous Moose Teachings webinar, if you haven't had a chance to check that one out, um, you can do so on the uh, Keepers of the Water Facebook page as well as Indigenous Climate Action Facebook page. And on that webinar, I had shared a little bit about Keepers of the Water and I just wanna share with you today some of the work that we do. Um, <clears throat> so Keepers of the Water is an Indigenous led organization. We work to protect water. We work on Indigenous rights, decolonization, education and awareness. We were formed in 2006, and at that time, there was a lot of industrial extraction happening, and there was also a lot of concern for the water. And so, excuse me, a declaration was made and in 2006, and in summary, what the declaration states is that water is sacred and that we must work to protect it and to live in harmony with all of creation. So that declaration still guides our work to this day. Uh, so since 2006, we've been having annual gatherings. We call them keeper of, Keepers of the Water Gathering. They've been in different Indigenous communities every year. 
We've had them in Treaty 10, Treaty 8, Treaty 11, Treaty 6. So we've had them in Manitoba, Northwest Territories, BC, Saskatchewan, Alberta. Some of the communities have been fly-in only communities or accessed by Bush Road. Um, the topic is always water, uh, but every gathering is diverse, just like the community. And often that we work with the community to put these gatherings together. And often the gathering is um, either the community wants to bring in information or they have information they want to share. Usually it's a bit of both. And uh, so there's cultural events and of course always good traditional foods. And then there's outcomes from each gathering. So sometimes it's um, independent research, uh, awareness, advocacy. And so that's, um, that's our gatherings. If you wanna see a full list of them, you can check them out on our website, keepersofthewater.ca. We're also working on a research project with corporate mapping. If you wanna find out more about corporate mapping, you can find them online. We've partnered with some researchers from corporate mapping to look at the largest oil and gas companies operating in Northern Alberta. So that's Treaty 8 and part of Treaty 6 territory. So we're looking at those companies and the water, how much water they're using. And so we're currently finalizing the report on that and the presentation and um, the plan is in 2021 to be presenting that into communities. Um, and then we also do work like this to bring Indigenous knowledge, wisdom into communities. We're from communities and we also partner with other communities. Um, and so we operate on donations and grant funding. If you want to donate or if you're interested in con um, looking at partnerships or would like to talk about possible grant funding, you can do so on our website. You can contact us through their keepersofthewater.ca. So one issue we're learning more about is what's happening in Northern Ontario in Treaty 9 territory. So there's currently a water crisis happening in Northern Ontario. Many Indigenous communities are with, without access to clean water and they've been under long-term water boil advisories for, for decades. Niskantiga uh, First Nation is a community in Northern Ontario. They're almost 500 people. They have been completely evacuated from their community to the city of Thunder Bay. They're under extreme stress, e extreme stress right now because it's a pandemic, it's holiday season. They don't want to be in a city, they want to be home, but they have no access to water at all. Um, so there's compounded issues and there's systematic racism. So the compounded issues with Niskantiga is that, first of all, where their water comes from, which is their water source, uh, which is Attawapiskat Lake, there's been hydrocarbons found in the water. Hydrocarbons are man-made chemicals and they're harmful to humans. Then the pipes that pipe the water from the lake to the water treatment center, there's a lot of leaks in those pipes. And so, and that's called the distribution pipe. Those pipes need to be completely replaced. And then there's the water treatment center itself. Um, I think of the communities of Fort Mackay and Fort Chip, they are, have been impacted by tar sands mining. They have state-of-the-art water treatment facilities. And so I think if those communities can have access to treated water, there's no excuse for um, the communities in Northern Ontario to have access to water. And so this is systematic racism because it's only Indigenous communities in Canada that have been under long-term boil water advisories. Um, the federal government has made a commitment to end all boil water advisories by the spring of 2021. And yet there's all kinds of mining companies that are just vying to get into Northern Ontario right now. Um, they're calling it the ring of fire. And while these communities are in crisis with no water and they're evacuated, companies are trying to go in and build winter roads and not winter roads for the communities, they're trying to build winter roads for their, for their operations. Um, and so there's some big issues there. 
the chief of Nescantiga and Saul Mamakwa. Um, he is, uh, Saul is, our Saul, sorry. He is, uh, he's an elected MP. He's indigenous from Treaty 9. He represents those communities in Northern Ontario and he is an MP with the Ontario legislature. So him and the chief of Nescantiga have been working really hard to raise awareness of the issues that are happening and the chief had asked, has asked for people to get involved. So for organizations, for people to write letters to the federal environment minister, to the provincial environment minister, to other um, government representatives. And he also asks, um, you know, do, pe do petitions, take actions, but also asking other First Nations to get involved. He wants other First Nations to educate, get educated on these issues and to speak out because, um, because we're stronger together. And uh, so that gets into our presentation today. Um, so on the last webinar, we talked about Wakotuin and Wakotuin meaning, a uh, Cree word meaning we're all related, we're all connected. Um, and so, uh, the example I'm going to use is we're sitting in a circle today. So I'm sitting in the circle, Jeff's in the circle, Kevin, Daffy, Lindsay, and all of you are sitting in the circle. But also the bear is sitting in the circle, the moose is sitting in the circle, water is sitting in the circle. And I actually see us humans as, uh, I see us as visitors in this circle because Everything else can exist without us, but we cannot exist without water. We cannot exist without the bear or the moose. And so with Wakotawin, we have a responsibility to take care of each other. So the water takes care of us, the moose takes care of us, and so on. And um, that's part of why we're having these webinars is to help you understand, you know, more about these animals and our relationship with these animals. Um, these webinars and the short time that we have with the speakers, it's not meant to be a full teaching. Full teachings, I've been told, can take, you know, a day, 14 days, weeks, months, years. So what I encourage you to do is reach out to Jeff and Daffy and Kevin, bring them to your group homes, bring them to your communities, bring them to the places where the knowledge needs to be shared. Uh, and make the time and space to, you know, spend more time with them learning about these teachings. And so with that, I got to check out our, uh, our lineup of speakers. Cool, Daffy. Um, so I'm going to introduce Daffy. So the way that our speakers, the lineup of speakers is going to work is we're going to have Daffy and then we're gonna have Jeff and Kevin. If we have time for questions, we'll take questions. One very important thing before we pass it on to Daffy is um, we have scammers. So they're trying to ask you to sign up on, click on a link or pay. There is no cost to watch this webinar. So don't click on any links and don't give out any of your personal information. Um, so I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about Daffy. I first met her at the uh, Saddle Lake Education Conference in February, I heard her speak and she just has such a beautiful spirit and I'm so happy and thankful that she's here with us today. Daffy is a Nakota Cree traditional teacher and a cultural advisor. She comes from the Sweetgrass First Nation and Treaty 6 territory. She's a mother of five, a grandmother of four, over her lifetime, she's worked as a professional educator in cultural education and land-based learning. She works in, she also works in areas of addictions, healing, and trauma. She's done presentations in Canada, the US, and Mexico on healing trauma, natural law, and traditional medicine. Um, her passion remains to her roots. She hosts traditional survival camps uh, in her own community. And she has been taught the tradition of storytelling and healing from a very early age. And she continues this practice of traditional healing and wellness today. So thank you, Daffy. I'm going to hand it over to you. And uh, hi, hi, everyone, for joining in. Hello, can you hear me? Um, can somebody let me know if 
or hold on if yeah. my mic is working. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. yeah okay. we can hear you. Okay, that's good. So um, I'm happy to be here, be invited here today to um, to help out. You might hear a little bit of noise in the background. I'm hoping they're not too noisy. My grandchildren are, uh, are um, having a bath right now. Give me one second. I'm just going to. So while we're waiting for Daffy to join back on, um, so the way that it's going to work is uh, we are trying to run the webinar in an hour and a half. So they have a, approximately about 25 minutes each. And uh, if there's time for questions, then we'll open it up for questions. You can go ahead, Daffy. Okay, sorry about that. My sorry. grandson is... Um in the bathroom uh well i'm happy to be here some of the <clears throat> when i was a little kid my grandparents um taught me about the creation stories but the creation stories are much more the creation stories they teach you about natural law they teach you about also who holds the natural law so <clears throat> what I didn't really understand too much about it when I was a kid. My grandparents talked about the creation stories and um, they also spoke about like a gift that and a natural law that Creator and Mother Earth had given to each of their children because they had a big family, they had a big home. As human beings, when you have a big home and you have children, you try your very best to give each child a job to contribute to the household like you tell your one of your kids okay one of you do the dishes one of you do the floor and if we all work together then our home will be in order and will be clean so this was the idea that creator and mother earth also gave to all of their children they gave each of their children um a gift but it was much more than just a gift it was uh the stories, each gift that was given was also a piece of uh, natural law. They held a piece of natural law. So their duty was to carry the certain laws. And uh, it's very important. So one of the things that uh, the bears were asked to carry was they were asked to carry the laws of child rearing. So the first bear, the first male and female bears, the creator asked them, gave them a gift, but also that gift to use that gift and to apply that gift was also to carry and to bring natural law. So their gift was to carry the laws of how you raise your children. And so one of the things like um, we were taught is to watch the bears when it comes to raising our children, how they raise they're young, how they discipline them. And, you know, um, a lot of times my grandparents, they told me these stories, but when I got older, I ended up learning more about it because a story, uh, our natural laws, they're not very long. Uh, the stories are simple and they're also uh, very easy to understand. But with that simple story, it's a long, long teaching. It's not um, uh, something that, you just hear about and then you understand it. You have to go through it within your own life, within your own family, your own home, your own children. So um, years ago, I was having um, trouble with my children. I had problems with which a lot of parents have in this time in this day. You know, our children are getting lost, you know, alcohol, drugs, um, you know, uh, uh, lack of self-worth, lack of self-esteem um you know all of these things that are disturbing right now the society that we live in and I went out and I and you know I cried and offered tobacco and I offered um uh berries and I offered uh, uh cloth and I went out on the land and I went and sat on uh, one of our our sacred sites
I think that we lost Daffy, maybe. Oh, okay. Are we back. on again? Yep, you're back. Okay. You might just want to turn your at? you might want to turn your video off. I think it might be taking too much uh, internet. Really? Okay. You can keep your video. Can no, keep your video on, Daffy. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. So where did you guys? Where did I get cut off at? <laughs> okay. I think. Um, so I was talking about going out to make offerings, even though my grandparents, they talked to me and they told me about the natural law and the natural law keepers. I didn't quite understand. Then I become a parent myself. And then I go through difficult times with my teenage kids, alcohol, drugs, uh, fighting, you know, and <clears throat> lack of self, self-worth, lack of self-esteem. And uh, a lot of, I guess, uh, confusion around um, who they are and and a lot of uh, especially you know when we're coming from a place where um, uh, it's difficult that during that time even when when I was younger it was very difficult to be to stand proud as a First Nations person you know it was um, in that time and then you're trying to stand proud and you're trying to get your children to stand proud so anyways I was having a very difficult time raising my children. So I went out on the hill and I got cloth and tobacco and I took berries up there. I went to go and pray and I was crying and I was asking the creator and mother earth, you know, help me to be a good mom. I'm having such a hard time. And I talked to, you know, when I was making my offerings, I talked to creator and mother earth and I told them about the difficulties I was having uh, raising uh, young children raising teenagers and you know young adults uh, I asked them I said help me I need you please help me how to be teach me help me to learn how to be a good mother I need you I'm, I'm really struggling right now with my children so in that time you know it was probably really it actually it was probably only about three or four days after I put that tobacco and that cloth down and I went and I had this really beautiful um, dream. And in this dream, I was on a hill and I was sitting there and it was really beautiful, this place that I saw. And it, it, everything was so bright and so beautiful. But in this dream, somehow I felt like I was alone. And all of a sudden, this really beautiful uh, pink light came. And when that pink light, it changed to, it came from the earth and it changed to a really old woman. And this old woman, this was uh, grandmother earth, mother earth. And she was made out of this pink and this white light. And she sat beside me in the dream. I was so sad and I felt alone. And I sat with her on that hill. I could hear her singing. I could hear her pray. And she said, look, look this way and I looked down the hill and I saw this mother bear and this mother bear she was rolling around on the ground with her babies and every time she would play with her baby she was always looking she was looking this way she was looking that way to make sure that her children were safe and grandmother earth she told me she said look at how she raises her children she said she loves her children. She protects her children. She does her best to have, to have fun and to play with them. But during that time, she's always watching every direction to make sure that her children are safe. She's always protecting her children. And <clears throat> it was a really beautiful dream. And when I woke up from that dream, I was really grateful. I was very thankful for um for my prayer and it was very uh it was very much appreciated and then uh from there I started to remember I was like that's what Gukum and Musham said Gukum and Musham they told me that the the first bear the male and the female bear in the very beginning of time when creator and mother earth when they had their children the earth was barren there was nothing on the earth. There was just Mother Earth. The center of the earth, that fire, is her heart, Iskutel. And the stone, the rock that protect her heart is her ribcage. It's her bones. 
it protects her her heart and the love that she has of a mother, the warmth that a mother carries. And the rivers, the underground rivers, the water is her blood. And uh, the, the dirt, the soil is Mother Earth's skin. And so <clears throat> my Gugum and Muslim, they were telling me that in that time, there was nothing on the earth, not even grass, not even a butterfly, not even a worm, nothing. Um, and uh, no animals, no birds, nothing. And when Mother Earth gave birth to her children, her children were beings of light. Every light was exactly the same size. And the creator said, our children should have a physical form. And so he reached down and he grabbed the dirt and the soil from all different places all around the world. So Mother Earth, her skin is different colors, just like us. Like on my hand, there's different shades of brown. On my palm, there's different shades. So all over the Mother Earth, her skin has different colors. So creator grabbed different soil from all over the world. And just like Play-Doh, he started to make these physical forms. And um, he was making the physical forms and he put them all in one place. Then they called their children, they were beings of light. And he said, pick one, pick one. So these children came and they were all beings of light. And <clears throat> uh, they were so excited. So those children said, oh, I wanna be a butterfly. I wanna be a bear. I wanna be a fish. I want to be the grass. I want to be a flower. I want to be a worm. I want to be a bird. I want to be a tree. So they put their physical form on. And um, after they were all done, it's such a long story. It's like a really, really long story. There's so many parts to it, but I'm trying to just um, uh, say it as simple as possible. So after everybody got their physical form, the creator and mother earth said, we're, we have to give our kids a job. So um, the very first born, when he, they gave birth to these first, first born children, they, uh, when they gave them that physical body, their physical body, he also told them, you are going to have eternal life. So the very first male and female bear were given eternal life. The very first uh, male and female of the wolves, eternal life. The very first of the turtles, eternal life. The very first of the human beings, they were given eternal life. So everything that was first born, they were given eternal life. But once their physical body uh, no longer was able to work, they got sent up into the stars. In that time, there wasn't even stars. And so it was the first born children who became the stars. And they talk about the, like, we have our own constellations, the constellations of um like the bear and it, within our you know sometimes people say it's a sensitive uh topic to speak about but i think that uh, more people need to have that understanding of it in our um, sundance lodges we have 14 poles and each of those 14 y's their their y poles they all point to a different constellation in the star so one of those uh, constellations in the stars is the bear so in the Sundance Lodge, there's 14 main poles, and those are the 14 main law carriers that we follow on this land, Turtle Island. There's many laws, many more, but those are the main ones, and plus the center pole, so that's 15. And uh, so one of those main poles in the Sundance Lodge, it points to the constellation of the bear. And, um, uh, you know, a lot of these things, um, they're kind of, uh, 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 they're very simple to understand, but at the same time, they're also uh, very complex. I'm still learning. I've only learned about um, five of the poles. Um, I have a long ways to go. I still only carry a pinch of the natural law. But if I go back and I start to remember the creation stories, I'll probably remember more because it's much more. A creation story is not just a creation story. It speaks about our laws. So, you know, um, I had had a, a dream one time. And in that, in that dream, um, I was in the stars. And when I was in the stars, um, I woke up and I was, I felt like um, I was alone and I looked up and I was sitting in the stars and I looked and I saw Mother Earth on the left of me and I heard um, this singing voice 
and these women came and they were dancing in front of me and they were the four grandmothers of the medicine, the ones that sit in the four directions. And they danced in front of me and they sang. When they, when they walked by, I saw their clothes and in their dresses, they were real flowers, like real life flowers, real life medicines. Grandfather told me, these are the ones that carry the laws, that govern the laws of our medicine. That's also one of the ones that's in our, in our uh, lodges, one of the poles. And they told me, look this way, grandchild. And I looked in the sky and I saw the constellation of the bear. And I said, these are the ones that carry the loss of our child rearing. So when we have problems with our children, raising our children, we're, we're supposed to make offerings to the grandmother and the grandfather bear and tell them I'm having a hard time um, with my children and talk about everything as though you were talking to uh, you know, another human being, as though you're talking to a counselor. So you speak to them about all of the problems you're having raising your children and you offer them tobacco and you offer them like fish and berries and you ask them that they help you in Creator and Mother Earth's loving way. You ask them that they work with Creator and Mother Earth's love to help you to learn, to help you to grow and to help you to understand what it means to be a parent. And in this time and day, it's very difficult um, uh, People, so many people are having a hard time to be a parent and we live in also a time where um, people worry a lot about what other people think and what other people say and 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 that's very also difficult on soul it's very difficult on your whole being and um and so it's important that we remember these um natural laws that we remember what creator and mother earth have given to us and how to live those laws. So, um, you know, there was a time, you know, my oldest son, he was in trouble. And I told him, you know, son, there's, uh, you know, there's order in this home. I made this home a certain way. You didn't follow the rules. And I said, there's no alcohol. There's no drugs in this home. This is a home. Uh, I, you know, um, I have my ceremony items here, the, the medicines. We have to have honor for all, all life and all that Creator and Mother Earth has given and gifted to us. And if you cannot have that honor, you can't stay here. I'm sorry. So you got to go. And, you know, he told me, where do I go? I said, well, you made that choice yourself. I said, I'm sorry. I love you. But if you want to stay, you have to follow the rules. If you cannot, then you have to go. And... A while later, he said, I hate you, mom. I hate you. And I said, you know what? We have natural laws that we are to follow to raise our children. And I said, I don't even need you to like me to be your mother. I don't need you to like me to do my job and to follow natural law as a mother. You can hate me all you want. I am still your mother. That doesn't change anything. My job is to teach you right from wrong. And if I cannot, teach you that then you'll have to learn that on your own I've done enough to teach you how to live a good life and uh, I am not your friend I am your mother and we take a look at the bear when the mother bear when those babies get to a certain age she gets rough with her children too and and we were told to follow when raising our children to try to teach them. And that's an important, uh, important part. Love is, is about, is very important when raising your children, but discipline is also very important. We need to discipline our children. Sometimes we have to get harsh. And that is the same way that Creator and Mother Earth, sometimes they send us a sign or sometimes they're trying to speak to us. And they speak to us when they first come in a very kind and gentle way. And if we don't hear them, and we don't listen to the signs and we don't listen to what they're trying to teach us while well, Creator and Mother Earth get louder. So they raise their voice and they speak louder. And if you still don't hear them, they raise their voice even louder. And then they try to get your attention again. Um, if we still don't understand that, sometimes they yell really loud. So that's the same. You know, we, we, you can learn a lot from watching how. Um, 
bears raise their children, to love your children, to protect them, but to also teach them right from wrong. If they choose to go on the wrong way, it is them. As long as we do our job as human beings to follow those laws of how to raise your children, the laws that govern us. You know, when we get to the, to the spirit world, the creator is going to ask us, you know, I, we gave you these laws. We gave you these laws. We, we, we tried to help you to live the best way. And we're going to have to answer for that. You know, um, we're going to have to answer to what creator and mother earth are telling, talking to us. They're going to ask us questions. So it's up to us. We get to choose whether we are going to follow natural law. We get to choose whether we are going to have honor for the laws that were set for us. These laws belong to the land. Um, they are the laws of how we live and how we govern ourselves on Turtle Island and to live in. These laws are very important. They teach us how to live in harmony and how to live in balance. Harmony and balance is way out of whack right now because of the abandonment of natural law. We still have many people uh, who continue to follow and live uh, natural law, but we have many because of the residential schools and all the things that happen that do not understand natural law anymore. So the creation stories are a very big part of teaching and understanding natural law. And they're to be taught to, um, to the children, no matter how small, um, you know, it's important because I think my grandparents, they started to teach me um, the creation stories. I think I was probably um, the first time my Gukum tried to, you know, was telling me about the creation stories. I think it was about three, but I didn't really sit still. And I really started to listen more when I was about five years old. So when I was five years old, that's when they would tell me like in the winter time, um, they would, uh, every time the snow would come, um, I would be very happy because every single night uh, when I was with my grandparents, my Kukum and Musham, they would tell me about um, the creation stories. And I look forward to that every year and they repeated them every year. There's also a, a lot of um, disciplinary stories in there. So those are also important to talk about the consequences when um, uh the consequences of our wrongs and the consequences of our lack of understanding or our lack of belief in the natural laws. So I'm not sure if that was 25 minutes. Is there um, we any have questions? A minutes. Yeah, we have a couple of minutes for some questions. Thank you, Daffy. I just, uh, just love hearing your voice and your teachings. Uh, let's check out this. I know some of the questions um, on the last webinar, which we weren't able to catch. One of the questions was about the bear. Does it represent anything? And I know you shared that with us, but does it represent like something? Uh, it represents uh, parenthood. Mother, uh, mother, and also too, um, the elders say that, let's say you can also tell about the year and about the harvest, like the harvest of berries and medicine. So let's say if uh, the female bears only have one baby, that means it's not gonna be abundant in the berries and the wild game. So you have to be extra careful when the bears only have one baby. Let's say there's a year where there's a lot of female bears and they have uh, two or three or four babies, that means it's going to be very abundant. There's going to be a lot of berries. There's going to be a lot of fish and a lot of wild game. But they say if the bears only, the female bears only have one, then you got to get ready and you got to work extra hard that year to gather and to collect um, your food. Uh, thank you. So <clears throat> this will be recorded. You can watch it later. Uh, one other question. Um, I'll just, uh, somebody was asking about, because we have about two minutes, they were asking about the idea of the bear being in charge of childbirth, which I think you just explained. 
And if you know of any books about the creation stories or where people can get more info, I did say for people to bring you to the communities, but what do yeah. you see when people are wanting to learn more? Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't read books. Um, I, I learned those creation stories from my Gukum and Musham and from also their friends from elders. So, um, but I do know when I was a kid, there was one book, um, it was called Stories of the Sweetgrass Cree. And there was a lot of my Gukuma and Musham's uh, friends in there. But, you know, those kinds of things, they're kind of difficult for me because I'm always like, do you wish there's some of those stories and, you know, that we're supposed to be told in the winter time, you know? So I don't know. Uh, I would, I'll, my, my first suggestion would be, you know, to seek out somebody who uh, understands the creation stories. Um, they're very, very long, those creation stories. So somebody would have to have, you know, um, uh, you know, a few days, you know, at least to talk about them. One day is just, it's not even enough. Um, but, you know, if it, if it has to be, then, you know, I guess, people could read I don't read very many books I just know that uh, um, the stories of the sweetgrass Cree there was lots of my Gukum and Musham's friends who were and I actually heard uh, lots of those stories from those people who are in that who uh, contributed to that book oh, if that's helpful. yes it is so that is a book uh, stories of the sweetgrass Cree um, thank you, Daffy, so much. Um, I'm starting to learn about this too. I, I just want to give thanks to the University of Blue Quills, who has uh, really helped me on my own journey of learning because they're a big promoter of culture and language. And it's actually through Blue Quills that I, I've met most of you. So we're going to go on to our next presenter, um, Jeff West Desigut. Uh, I'll just read a little bit of his bio, and then if you want to learn more about him, his full bio is on the Facebook event page. So Jeff comes from the Himikamak Cree, Cree Nation. He has served as a language consultant and knowledge keeper for many years. He continues to dedicate much of his time to helping people overcome personal challenges through ceremonies, traditional medicines, and counseling. He has dedicated his life to the preservation of the Nehiao language and culture. Jeff recognizes the spirit within the tongue as he interprets the parables within the Nehiao language. Um, and so thank you, Jeff, for joining us and I'll let you uh, take over from here. Okay. Hi, thanks to Timitak, Stame, a Vietamishata book. Besides, she gave her and daughter Ned. In a in an Askumago town in our woods, Catarina Maguishak, the Vigo Gilgatu Agota, the Peacha Mustatuak, Minogotagishaga, a mini Guishak, the Cushish Pitama. First of all, I want to greet each and every one of you that are here. Foremost, thank Creator for, for today and uh, the gifts that we still carry today and that knowledge. I uh, was thinking a lot about the uh, uh, past couple of days about We tend to translate a little bit different than what the English term knows about this bear. They call it a bear and, and if you ever look it up, it, it, they refer to it as a carnivore, like a, a real scary, they instill fear in that term bear. What really connects us to, to, to Mashwa is that connection to the land and to the medicines. And uh, I want to share a little story with you because it's these stories that, uh, that evolves us to be able to spiritually understand rather than creating a perception of that term bear from that English language. A long time ago, my granny 
my grandmother, my Kokum was still alive. She had shared a story with me on what the connection to the laws of the land were. And a lot of times we, we tend to articulate and translate things a little bit different than the English language. Where the uh, Mashkwa came from, it evolved from the grass and it talks about uh, uh, Mashkosi. That's what we call the grass. And that's where his life came from, Mashkosik. Hence the word Mashkosis, Mashkwa. And those terms, I wanna be able to highlight within the story that, that I wanna share with you. I thought about uh, a lot of the lodges, one of the lodges that we carry is the, called the Bear Lodge and uh, the Bear Ceremony. Uh, there's protocols that are in place in order for one to call upon these ceremonies. And I know that uh, part of this creation story, I also want to make note that uh, there are four knowledge keepers in these directions from the east, the south, and the west, and also the north. And so they vary in different when we come to storytelling. This one in particular is the one that I want to share with you today of what connects us to the land. And, and it comes uh, from my, my grandmother had told me the story about Mashkwa. My grandmother said that the bear evolved from the grass. And when he arose, he arose four times. The very first one, it referred to this little bear that, that first awoken from the grass. They call him, out here in the West, they call him Wagaiwis. Over in the East, they call him Opatsawansis. And there's a reason why they call him Opatsawansis because meaning he'll crawl up a little tree and he'll make that thing bend. Hence the word, this is where they come from, Waginogan, one of the largest. Eh? So again, when he arose, he had spoke because at one time, all the uh, all of creation spoke one language on on Turtle Island, and he said when he woke and, and brought his life from the from the grass, he says, "Omanila, uteni vishipo etan kati ship ma me mi tigo masipi misiwe evin te shipo maskawata muk ay sinyo kita wya pachita taskino." When this little bear awoke, he says, I will follow the eastern waters and I will go give strength to the land for the people to use and utilize. The second one that got up, a black bear rose the second time from the grass. And he said, when the second bear, the black bear rose, he says, I will follow the southern waters and I will go give strength to the land for the people to use so that they may be healthy. The third one that arose from that grass he said, Utenina Sagitawak Niga is Sipuetan. Ego Tesi Tepagaimuan. O what's here? Tau you have a guitarska magak. Ego Temisio in Tesipe Moscawa, Tamoga Skino, I sing Nigitawia Pachita. Ego Tatao Chiminot. The third bear that arose was the brown bear, the grizzly bear. He says, I will follow the Western waters and I will go give strength to the land for the people to use. For I have enough strength to climb all the mountains and the terrain and I will go give strength to the land. The third one that arose, the fourth one, the last one, 
Neoga Pimpa Shigo Teogo Omashko, Omishigito, a big squatty work. O tenina, the shipiga marke with Shipretian, the Gotini Red Otan, Monsieur Winter Shipwe Mascawata Mogaskino, I sin you get a yapachita. Maga, no more in a Nicacarishimon, every papiagic, I sin you up. Every skin or more can take it easy give it to the Chavo and Agasigawe. The fourth one arose was the polar bear. He says, I will go to the northern waters and I will go give strength to the land for the people to use so that they may be healthy. But I will not go to sleep. I will await for the people and I will show them the pathway back to the star world where they came from. That is why when these ones manifested from the grass, in the fall time, when the medicines are about to go to sleep, the grass will lay down. That's why the bear, Mashkwa, has to go to sleep and lay down too, and becomes dormant in hibernation. So we, this, this is the keeper of, to a lot of the, the, the natural medicines. We see it when we say mas, masqua, mas, that's a parable meaning the strength and the power of the land. The power and the strength of the land. Maskawak, maskawisi, you hear that, eh? And masqua, and maskigi. So in this term here, when you take a look at this, you see Maskigi. The very first parable talks about the power and strength. Gige talks about your homelands, the spiritual power and strength of your homelands. That's what Maskigi means to us. It does not mean medicine from the medical term. And uh, in these teachings, we always got to have laughter and, uh, and and I want to tell you a little story about uh, a brother of mine says boy I got a bear song for you he says but you can't record it I said okay I was really really happy to get this song eh? and his name is Ed he lives in Winnipeg he says, brother I got a song for you it's a bear song here it goes, but I don't want you to record it. It goes like this. Do -do 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 -do. Can't get enough low sugar crisp. So that's the bear song. <laughs> in time with these things, you know, we need laughter in a lot of our teachings. And uh, so I ask you not to record that song. To <laughs> in the terms of Masqua, it talks about the carriers of one of our, of, of many lodges. And, and a lot of times prior to us entering in that big lodge, the Sundance Lodge, we, we honor this bear because it carries a lot of medicines. We utilize a lot of the bear grease, the bladder, the, 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 the feet that we utilize, even the hide. We call that Masko Utagwanagan. Utagwanagana is what we refer to as, as a robe. And we honored this because it, it had medicine on it. The brain matter also was a medicine to us. The tongue that lifts, there's a little bone in there. We use that as medicine. And all these things, the back of those back straps on the bear were that. A lot of people used to be able to eat this bear. It, me, I, I, I find it so sacredly that I, uh, I don't bother it because it's in a star world. That big dipper that you see in the northern sky represents that big bear. Uh, and that's the one that shows us our journey home when we leave this world, when we pass away. That's the one that carries and shows us that direction towards home to where our creation came from. So within this, this one that, that said that he was going to go and prepare the land prior to the us coming into this world, 
we were always standing upright. And what we, the teachings that we were told about the bear, and a lot of these ones, the medicines have a name to them, just like the, the, the bear root, the maskuminana tik, maskumina, maskupawa, agumina, asini maskwa, wanigewa. You know, these are terms of the medicines, the natural medicines that we, we come to understand. So in, in, in preparing medicines, we always acknowledge through prayer of that give and take relationship. One of the things that uh, and, and it gives us the, the, the strength and, and to be able to connect spiritually so when that question, what, what does it actually represent? It re represents the doorway to the land of how and one of the things that it creates that relationship through these stories. And they're not legends, they're not myths, they're, they're, they are the relationship we must have with the land. So within these creation stories, I come to realize that a lot of the medicines have a bear name to it, just like the bear root, you know, the, the, the mountain ash, that we call it maskomenana, the, the, the bear berries. And they refer that to that as ginikinik uh, or uh, giginigan is what they refer to it, bear berry bush. So every one of these things have an acknowledgement to a thing. Oh, I don't know what's what's happening here. You could just keep going, Jeff. Okay. Where was I at? Anyway, I was here anyway. One of the things that connects us to that land is being able to honor it and respect it. And a lot of times, a lot of these ones, you'll see the hump on its back Waigan is what they call it, eh? And this is what they refer to the bear lodge. And, and this, some of them is composed of 40 willow lodges and being able to understand that creation story of all of these 40 willows that, that they have a representation and a significance to it. Just like the star chart that you see back here, this, these 40 stars, these 40 diamonds that are around here in the white, it talks about that bear lodge there so the star blanket and the star teachings are, are all composed of that creation story. So when we, when we uh, acknowledge this bear, we call this Uwaigan, that big hump on its back. And, and these are representations of those lodges. Even the horse has, has, that, has that hump on its back, Uwaigan. Hence the word Uwaginogan. They're the carriers of these lodges. So when we put up a horse lodge, a buffalo lodge, a bear lodge, and they even have a moose lodge. And, and I know that the Blackfoot people, they carry a beaver lodge, eh? And uh, these are the ones that, that, that are held sacredly and, and being able to understand them within your language definitely opens the doorway to that spirituality. Because when we present to you as a bear, the only perception that you're going to create by yourself, it's a carnivore. I got to be afraid of it. This, this, this is not about fear. It's about respecting distances. <clears throat> Two years ago, me and my son, we were down duck hunting down, down the bank here. And we came upon a bear and said, Dad, look at that bear. I said, my boy just say, Awas maskwa. Awas, but he's got to hear you. So he hollered out loud, Awas, Masqua. And the bear, Masqua, looked at him and walked away. I said, that's how you, because you need your language to connect to the land. And one of the things that I, he, he said, I said, my, my, my son, if you said, there's a bear. And if you run from that bear, he doesn't understand that language. He's going to chase you, thinking that, come and get me, I'm a, I'm a happy meal, you know. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's what really connects us to that land is the language. 
So we use a foreign language to, the, to these things. We are not connected anymore. And that's why there's such a, a, a big movement on with, with, with language. So how we extract and use these medicines, we have to go back to the origins of language. And one of the things is the, the laws of the land. And like Daffy was saying, these are the laws of the land that we must share. We have yet to come to that shareness. And uh, I, I don't know what's, what's happening. And as I travel throughout Saskatchewan, Manitoba, all of Alberta in the Southern parts, you see all these farm fields say, no trespassing. So until we're able to break down these walls of sharing that knowledge to this land, just like if we went to England, we're not gonna know anything about the lands of England because it's foreign land to us. We don't know the laws of the land. So we, in this treaty, we were supposed to come together and amalgamate and teach them about the laws of the land. Yet that has not been done in this relationship of treaties. So, so there is another story. I don't want to get into this long story because the old ones always told me, never cut your story short. Always go right through. And, and, and in due time, these stories will, will Will be uh, will be exposed because it's a time for us to begin to learn. How's my time there, Jesse? Five more minutes. Okay. So with with that part of that story, a two year old uh, bear we call him Papasqua. Papasqua is what we call him because they go through rites of passages. They go. They're they're called different. They're just not called bear, little bear. And this and that, we call it, you know, Opatsawansis to, to, to Opatsawansis in the east and over here to the west, they call them Wagayos. That two year old, a mother will only walk with these ones for two years. And that's why they call them Papasqua. They now have the skills to be able to, to forge for themselves. And then within that fourth year, the fourth year, they begin their cycle over again. So this is when they, they, they begin mating after four years. And then again, is what they would call them. Eh? So there's different names to them. And that's the relationship we have. It's just not a bear to us. So again, we got to be very cautious. And this is why we need to speak on behalf of our mother. Mother Earth, because these ones don't have a voice to speak on them for themselves. So with all the industries that are that that, that are clear cutting and, and even the waters, you know, even the animals will not be healthy. So I'm I'm glad that the, the, this uh, this water keepers are, are 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 being a voice to those elements and, and, and our sacredness of being able to say, wait a minute, we can't destroy this or we'll have no more maskwak, we'll have no more maskigi and so forth. So with that, I, I just want to stop there. And I want to thank you for lending me your ears today to, to be able to listen to this. Hey, hi, Jeff. Uh, we have time for a couple of questions. Um, I'm just looking what questions we have. <clears throat> Um, a lot of people joining in from all over, all over the place. Uh, okay, so we have the questions in the chat here. You talked a little bit about uh, hibernation. Can you tell us a little bit of like, do you, uh, any understanding you have about the bear and the hibernation and what's happening at that time? Well, they, they understand when they, they, it's about time to hibernate. And one of the things that a, that a bear does, and, and I was shown this medicine that they go dig up by the water and it almost looks like a big onion. And they call it, is what they call it, eh? 
And this bear eats that, eats it, eh? And that's what actually puts him to sleep, eh? And uh, I, I know that in the time when this hibernation, when that grass begins to lay down and, and we see the grass laying down and uh, that is the time for them to go and hibernate, eh? And, and, and it's a cycle. When you take a look at the moons, and, and I wanted to share one more thing with you. Pay attention when it comes towards January, when, when, the, when the Thunderbird comes home in January, eh? It's gonna be warm. Sometimes you're gonna see lightning or rain. And what's gonna happen is all the willows, that we already had a frost already of all the frosting of the willows. That were the very first ones to be born. In January, when you see in the Kupan Chigoge, Kamaskobani Panchige, Gonigo, Nipisiwatiko, meaning when you see the frost of all the trees and the willows, that is when the bears are born, the cubs are born, eh? So the first breath of air that the old ones would say, when they take, they inflate those lungs, they, they frost up the whole trees, the willows and everything. So pay attention to that because the land, we're able to read the land and also read the sky. And that's what our elders taught us, eh? Awesome, thank you, hi, hi. Um, <clears throat> so as uh, Jeff said, with, um, with these animals, we have to take care of them because if we don't take care of them, it's not, it's going to be soon after that we disappear. We're all, we're all connected and we cannot exist one without the other. So we can't just have a couple of bears and throw them in a zoo or, you know, moose, like people might think, well, I don't need bear or, you know, they're dangerous or whatever, but there's so much more to them than um, some people understand. So our last speaker, Dr. Kevin Lewis, I'm going to read a little bit of his bio. Uh, Kevin, and, and tell me if I'm saying this right, Wasagai, Wasagai Um Dr. Kevin Lewis is a Plains Cree instructor, researcher, and writer. He has worked with higher learning institutions within the Prairie Provinces of Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta, and in, in the areas of Cree language development and instructional methodologies. Um, he's been working in community schools, with community schools to promote the land and language-based education. He's a founder of the Kaniasic Culture Camps, and he runs a land-based Cree immersion school in his community. So um, we're gonna have Kevin speak, and then I'll, we'll close off the session. So go ahead, Kevin, you can take it away. All right. Uh... That's it. I'm just going to leave the uh, logo on there for a little second. So I'm going to use it as a, a mnemonic um, to sort of like a, a model that we use at our culture camp. So I nigani to go and ask him one, but I guess I mean, I guess you got my goose here, yeah, we goose here, uh, got me up, mutti, you got this go up, you see more, you ask Tina Maguire, me which is to own, saggy to own, you got tapu and go up a chitaya. So I think, um, I'd like to open up with that, uh, thanking the Creator for g giving us another day, and also uh, the sun for coming out and uh, lighting up our our walk. And uh, so, a little bit of our uh, of our um, logo here, and I, I just decided to leave it on because I want to use it as a, a reminder of uh, what we what we do here. And uh, you'll see way on top, um, you'll see the sun and. Uh, I don't have the moon in there, but the moon's up there and as well as the stars. Yeah. So they're all up there. And then just below them are the flyers, all the winged ones that uh, that use the skies. And then just below that are the, the standing trees back there. And uh, this, this kind of looks like our camp. And it is, uh, in a way, a representation of what we try to what try to teach in this camp. And then um, those trees that are behind there, those are the ones that we use for our miguapa, um, uh, our teepees, our lodges. Uh, some of those trees, um, there's poplar trees, there's birch trees, there's uh, 
willows, um, there's uh, uh, spruce trees, pine trees, all these different trees. And um, I guess uh, I guess the logo is not showing there. All right. So anyway, I guess you can go to our website. Thank you for um, stating that that uh, uh, that it's not showing. And then hopefully my my face shows here. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, maybe you can go to the the website and uh, you can take a look at it from there. Um, I'm going to uh, yeah. I was I was just talking about the the logo. And Kanyasi culture camps, that's where we teach. That's where we do a lot of these teachings. But at the bottom now, um, coming to the land, you'll see two, two teepees on our logo. And one, logo, uh, one teepee represents um, everything that is taught out there, all the world knowledge, all the different cultures, there all the different uh, ways of praying, being, and doing things. But then the other lodge represents our ways of doing things, which is so you can... In that lodge, you can use your medicines, you can use your uh, sweet grass, you can bring out your rattle, you can bring out your drums, you can bring out your medicines there without being questioned, without being scrutinized, without anybody telling you, uh, you, you know, there's no place for that here. And uh, it's because it's a safe place and we've been scrutinized, you know, our own people have scrutinized us and um, we've sort of brought our, our knowledge keepers down and kind of look down at them for too long. Um, and, uh, you know, by creating a space like this, we start creating an identity. We start creating that um, how we're related to each other. And uh, so in those, where those teepees are, and I'm in one of the big teepees right now, actually. And this is where we, we teach, this is where we do ceremony, and then this is where you do our pipe ceremonies. We use our medicines, we use our, our rattles and our drums in here. And we have uh, tobacco, we have uh, sage hanging here. We have all sorts of things that are that are here. We have a uh, steam out that, you know, that's here as well that we use. And sorry about the lighting. Um, I'm trying to lean forward so you can at least I can see my, my brown face here. Uh, so uh, what happens is um, uh, in that lodge, um, we've started to see the fruits. We started to see sort of like that connection, that healing that needs to happen in, our, on, in all of our communities. And what's the, this, um, this a few years back, uh, I'm gonna say about 19, 20 years back, my uncles and I were, were standing right by the lake over there. And um, he, one of them is, is here with me right now. and. Um, really love their teachings and uh soon you know they they talk about the songs they sing the songs we sing the songs uh we do this uh lodge called pitogamic which is the bear lodge and um in there this is where you kind of see that logo of ours in uh in real time and you're singing the songs and then you start you start asking a whole bunch of these questions in those old because they're, they're singing really old songs and the only way you can find out how those songs sound is by just actually going in there and taking part. And in that lodge, which is probably like, I'm in about a 30 foot teepee in here right now. And um, uh, that's about as big as that law lodge. I, I, and in the mountains, they call it law lodge, but here we call it Pihtogamik and they smoke the pipe all night. And um you know, because you're giving thanks to so many of that creation. So I was naming uh, last time uh, I, I was uh, sharing this and I share this all over the place because it's just an intro. Like if you really, really want um, to know more, like uh, um, he, uh, he mentioned uh, about protocol. So here's um, something about protocol that I wanted to share. Uh, you see this, uh, there's tobacco, but it's just not um, tobacco, tobacco, like steam out, but it's like that old, the old type uh, steam out. So that's something that we go out with the kids, with the adults, with whoever wants to learn about it. And we'll go collecting this in the uh, Bronson Lake forest area, which is our traditional territory. And all around that area, we, we this is stuff that we pick from there, right? Uh, uh, um, you know, um, and then all those, uh, uh, or and you know, all those different names. So that's the way 
uh, you would approach people that then there's lots of them. There's still, we have to utilize these uh, knowledge keepers because they're there, they're around. Uh, and I would say, if you have questions and you, if you want more detail um, into, you know, finding out what's this guy talking about? What do you, you know, make sure you take this tobacco first. And everywhere where we sagichak or nanabuju, wainabuju, wherever they walked, wherever he walked, if it was across a river, if it was across a bush, if it was all over the place, he would put down some tobacco because he recognized these are different territories, these are different borders, these are there's all these different things that live all over the place. So that's that's a good use. You can use this all over the place, you know, this tobacco. So it's a it's alive, it's animate. It's a spirit. It has spirit. It's a good. So this one is an oscapius. Oscapius. So it means um, it's a helper. So now um, if I am going to go uh, visit or if I go to that law lodge, of course, I'm going to take a wipinasun. Like this. Uh, today we use cloth. And before, um, before this cloth had come, they used to use willow. So this was, again, another qu question that we used to use or ask. And what type of willow will depend on the location that you're at. So these protocols will vary because there's so many different types of people all around, right? There's different types of uh, knowledge systems that are out there. And uh, this this bear lodge is also known or an equivalent to a mitiogamic. Uh, and then that's where uh, this governs us, this law lodge. Um, I mean, this mitiogamic is the heart, right? And so we started talking about the heart. And in a lot of ways, meaning that we're, we're poor in a lot of ways. And uh, we're talking to elders right now all over, you know, and asking about um, indigenous education and indigenous control over education. The curriculum is here. It's written. It's written in our lodges. And people always say, well, is it provincial? Is it a provincial uh, curriculum? And uh, it, and where is it written? Is it written? So here's the cool, uh, cool story about this. So now um, I'm there. I'm going to say a few of these stories because it, it was my, uh, my doctorate research. It was to hang out in these lodges to figure out okay, a lot of lodges, you know, and uh, we have so much information in those lodges, but understanding the, uh, the intro to them, because there's uh, um, like both Daffy and uh, Jeff had mentioned, a lot of these um, institutions like the churches, the schools, uh, uh, you know, the um, the politics of them, the laws that they created, uh, they don't, they some of them kind of don't align with the, the natural law that was given to us. And then where is this written? Well, it's written in nature. It's written in the in the mountains. And then these, um, this one specific topic that we're talking about is, uh, it has to do with um, uh, the creator's laws. And those are the ones that we follow. And in, these, in this bear lodge, uh, this is where all of those ahtayak or ahpinak, they're all laid out there. They're all... Um, in BC, all these poles, these ones that are standing behind me all around here in these teepees, we don't um, we don't carve them here. We uh, they represent they represent um, like there's your pole and all these different directions of these poles. That's how we read uh, these teepees and these different lodges, and um, all of these poles are teaching teaching lodges. Uh, you know, you look uh, south over here, you have um, the one where my thumb is right now, and that's the last one that we put on this lodge, and that represents the two leggeds. So how humbling is that in terms of uh, our creation story, right? All these, and now this pole, this pole all the way around, those come, they came before us, and those are thunder beings, sun, wind, our grandfathers that sit and grandmothers that sit uh, on the north side, north side of us on this lodge, and uh, you know, and then all the cardinal directions. So in this pitogamic, uh, there's knowledge keepers and song holders and uh, 
storytellers um they're all in there uh, uh but like again this is just the intro there's nothing but beauty in in that law lodge which is also called the pitogamic like i said but gani gani with the, the leader or kind of like one of the bosses in that law lodge is the bear right so mashkwa wa kait kait it but nyugati nyugat new got you in um the the four legged human right and you got this and you got you got you in um <clears throat> that's the name that we have for that of uh, the four legged human i guess um in the translation of it but um um my uncle was just here and uh, some of the songs that we sing is it's amazing where these songs travel to and there's like one song there that sings about uh ugmawati which is uh chief mountain then uh there's also a song where we sing um where that's where you know that's where that first human and that first bear uh that's where they met and then that's where that first connection and that song is beautiful you eat with the skati go hai angamuna uh they're all they have words to them and uh, that, that's where you start putting together the puzzle you know these creation stories and it's good can you hear we yeah um kagamimo to 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 learn our languages because uh you know there's uh, like my uncles uh my aunties it, this is their whole lives you know that they um that they spent in uh, knowing and learning these ceremonies and how to put up these lodges and so it's uh the, i guess it's to out to facebook book land that there needs to be ethics involved in here where we talk about it um and again this is just intro and i only know a little bit just like daffy had said uh but it's it's so much um and uh, i feel so full when i'm in those uh, ceremonies i feel like my spirit feels so whole uh my mind you know is clear and uh and it's again it's full but clear if that makes sense uh but there's some beautiful songs about the the female bear uh the baby cubs that come out of those little bears and then how they were in the times of uh, the dinosaurs and uh how they kept you know their the, the creator's law and then yigi yigi chimantu chiku kaya wagayo saga they they sit right beside creator because of their uh how strict they are how straight forward they are that they follow these laws that were given to us and uh, much there's so much in you you go nega ya you go no im go ya ki ko ko ma ga no ga ko mu sum no ku kum no so those are our relatives or we we refer them as grandmothers and grandfathers and uh, there they sit beside the creator because they were gifted right they were gifted that spot just like i, I you know if i ever get white hair i can say oh i'm a elder i'm a elder i can you can't say that you have to be given that by your community you have to be honored uh those uh those seats by a, a community right you can't go around and say oh yeah i'm an elder i'm a knowledge keeper i'm a this and that it's hard to do that you have to you have to gain that respect right and you have to do it right do it in that right way and let let these things move around for you guys right uh, know those protocols of that local area that you're in and uh you know lift up those knowledge keepers that are there because they're all around us and i love hanging out with them because they they talk about um you know the gifts uh, let's say this i have short hair right now but pretty soon I'll, maybe i'll have um uh that uh, isolation hair you know uh, how what's his name used to have um bruce lee used to have a nice haircut right uh, and all of our relatives used to have that same haircut uh at least that's grown up here but it's uh you know to make it uh they say to make it long and shiny they they say oh put some bear grease on there right uh maskup me right they use that medicine that good medicine and then why is that medicine you know you start questioning okay well you start figuring out through story through song through the language um through the speakers through those knowledge keepers why you know and they start telling you about the berries they start telling you about uh, the roots that that um bear eats the the plants the dandelions the you know all of these um different medicines that 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 bear gives us and uh we just follow it along just like that one of those songs say you know the song 
was, you know, well, I'm going to show you, you know, and there's not just one of us. There's black bear, there's red bear, there's orange bear, there's white bear, you know, there's a gray bear, there's a grizzly bear. So, you know, so all of these, uh, um, wapask, umstanask, right? Oh, we have a whole bunch of different bears. No, she must, uh, the little cub which of Magans, right? And what the, what those mean. So there's a, they give, they give so much, you know, and, um, you, and they're still around. Now, uh, one thing we need to realize is, I am, and this is, uh, wapask, wapmaskwa, the polar bear. Uh, he was given the, the job to look after Mskwami, Mskwami Oguayguna, right? Uh, he was given these, uh, the ability to uh, sort of understand that he, as soon as he keeps on making tracks in that snow, in that ice up where he is, that means there's going to be balance in the world. So in the time of climate change, in the time of water keeping, you know, and singing those songs and keeping, making sure we do our part as human beings again we're they were not last pole in that tp we're not the first you know so we have to recognize that these instami maganak these ones that came before us right those are the ones that came before us and then we finally came and then in the ceremony you're going to see we're the last ones that we give thanks to the Right, that uh, grandmother spirit that uh, takes care of us, but it's again the, this information that we're sharing. You know, all all of you know we have bits bits and pieces, and uh, it takes a whole bunch of us to remember bits and pieces because we've been separated. You know, systematically separated. These reserve systems were were not always around. Right, we were we were, were we were free and we still are free. And to go coast to coast to coast to coast, right? But in time of isolation now, big tip skau go somut masqua, right? Big tip skau skio masqua and dog go somut, meaning the black bear goes to bed one night, and that's the uh, hibernation that insists uh, kamamskuta. So um, this bear goes one night, uh, goes to bed one night. And then my uncle just shared this while well, he was here real quick. And he's like, yeah, you know, um, uh, Lake used to say this and that's Kumpan uh, Nyagana. And, uh, you know, again, adding to um, sort of what Jeff had said that uh, on January that uh, she would turn once in January and it was about that time. And then that's where she would give her, 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 uh, her birth to these uh, cubs. But again, she would go into isolation, right? And or the uh, uh, you know, Moskwa, Napio Moskwa, um, they would go into isolation and they would they would not eat, they would hibernate, they would isolate, they would sleep, and they would meditate. They sang, they studied, uh, and all these beautiful things that we're doing right now. We're that's what we're doing right now, is we're in our bubbles. And we're isolating, but we're never, ever alone. Okay. Never, ever think you're alone. Uh, breathing, that's a grandfather that's helping you breathe and talk. If you can pray, pray. You know, if you're, if you want to cry, cry, you know, use all those different emotions that were given to us, but we have to emotionally grow. And that's, this is a wonderful time to do that. Now, you smagan to that's a that's a police officer of all these medicines. And so again, it's really good relative of ours, and it's just an intro that we get to do here. Um, but there's a lot of knowledge keepers, and I wanna I wanna encourage people to start going to those different um, ceremonies so we get that identity, so we get that picture, and you get it in real time, not just through Zoom, but when things um, you know cool down here, and we start uh, healing. Um, go you know hang out with those elders because i i miss them you know i miss them hanging out with them you can't go visit them right now but uh somehow some way maybe we can convince them to um you know go on zoom or uh facetime and use technology and they are you know and and thank you for the elders that are listening 
Nasum no, Munanto itista migum capata, maga muigakio, natsumuna, muigakio, natutinan. So it's just sort of like that ethics again. Um, we need to figure out, you know, how much to share online and Facebook and everything else, but just to do an intro to see if we can fill up those lodges when, when, uh, when it gets cleared up here, you know, uh, post COVID when we're, when we're dealing with this. Um, uh, but we need, you know, those elders to be well. We need you guys to be well and um, pray to those grandfathers and grandmothers that sit on the north side, you know, those, uh, those uh, relatives of ours can help us, but also understand that they rest too in the, in the, in the winter time where they hibernate. And then they're also involved with some, there's so many awesome stories out there. I wish we had more time, but again, we only have five minutes and then I'm going to leave it open for questions and, um, thank you for logging in, whoever's logged in. I, we don't know who, how many people are listening to this, but uh, again, here's, uh, better show this off. There's our swag. So you guys, uh, if you guys want some swag from our, uh, or just come visit us, you know, or get in, get a hold of us. Um, we love a, uh, the Knowledge and Wisdom Center. We're run things. We're big supporters of them. Uh, Wilford Buck has an amazing story book on where the pole are pointing to. Seven stars this way, seven stars this way. And there's layered stories to those. All right. That's just this, just an intro that he does too. Um, but again, uh, they're, they're starting to come out. We're starting to finally come out with our stories. And uh, I hope uh, I get to see, uh, you know, great grandchildren, grandchildren, you know, uh, I hope to do things right, and uh, and if I do things right, uh, I I will get to see that. But again, uh, we have to walk and tread carefully, and then with all always the guidance from the elders, and that's what they say. Steam uh, And then if it's really something really special, then yeah, we cusk. You can put that toba tobacco and sweet grass and cloth there, and then just go ask your for your prayers. Um, you know, maybe a story, maybe. So that's just the way we do things. And uh, well, the water keepers, again, them too. Uh, the amazing work that they do all, all across our territories, right? And uh, um, July next year, and I might as well put this out, uh, we're going to be putting on a, another waters, water gathering and a women's gathering. So think about the full moon uh, in July. And all the listen to rock star speakers, some knowledge keepers, and just uh, uh, amazing women and uh, people that will be showing up. So, some Maya can ask them now. I thank uh, Jeff and uh, Daffy for what they do and prayers to their home fires and to keep on doing what they're doing. So, hi, hi. Hi, hi, Kevin. Um, I just wanted to keep listening all day to all of you. Uh, thanks for mentioning the water gathering. So Keepers of the Water partnered with Kaniasic Culture Camps uh, this past summer. We are going to have another women's uh, gathering and a water gathering combined. Uh, that will be held out at Kaniasic Culture Camps. So follow us both on Facebook because we'll be posting information. Kevin, there's a question. If you have any um, published work, have you written anything that people can look at? Yes, I, I have. Um, we have uh, some work down in uh, New Zealand, some journals down there that we talked actually about um, exactly this, like the stories that we're getting. And, uh, um, how to be um, respectful, you know? And again, uh, I write in there about um, how beautiful they are, how loving the elders are, uh, but to tell them uh, so we don't lose them, right? We need to keep on, uh, we need sessions like this, especially right now. They're, they're healing to our ears, uh, to our hearts, to our whole being, you know? Um, but they're, yeah, just um, look those up. I'm sure you can be able to find them. And then the digital technology and language. So there's a lot of, uh, a couple of new, publications that are out there like chapters so yeah yeah there are okay so we'll though. get it we can get sorry what's that uh, i'll have more to come though here uh, okay soon. 
Right on. So I'll track them down for everyone and we'll get them out on, get, get Kevin to post them and we can post them as well. And Jeff, I just want to say your, your song was a big hit. Everybody keep asking to hear the bear song that you shared with us. So thank you. And Daffy, thank you. Lindsay, uh, thank you for helping to run this technology. That's not something that many of us are, you know, some of us are, can even do. So um, thank you for that. I was going to say when I posted this that uh, my cousin had told me it was my Notzawis, Henry Cardinal. He's from Goodfish Lake, him and my auntie Mildred. It's their anniversary today, their 41st anniversary from Goodfish Lake, Alberta. He's the son of my, my Musham um, Harrison Cardinal. So I have to say happy anniversary. And we are looking at having future webinars. I know Indigenous Knowledge Wisdom Center is interested in hosting some more. Um, so we will be having some discussions on that. Uh, and again, if you want to donate for the work that we're doing, you can do so on Keepers of the Water uh, website, keepersofthewater.ca. I want to thank all of you for taking the time to attend today. Um, just take care of yourselves. Love yourself. Don't be hard on yourself. They say we're our own worst critic, but we have to live with ourselves first. We have to love ourselves first before we can accept love from other people, you know? So that's really important to be just very kind and gentle to yourself during this time. Get out when you can to get fresh air, um, you know, and pray and whatever you need to do. Kevin Swag, his uh, sweaters are super comfortable. So yes, check that out and stay tuned. We will be having more webinars in the future. Ikse, hi, hi, we'll see you guys again.